Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Hey, thanks for watching. We're talking reverse osmosis systems today. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to replace the little teeny internal check valve. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, inside the kitchen now. Come on down below. I've got a flashlight here. I'll turn that on. And the first thing we are going to do is actually close the main water supply. And just by turning it clockwise until it stops, that will cut all water to the system. Coming up top, if yours is like ours, you're not gonna have any water coming out. But just in case, have a glass here to catch any and all water or drips that comes out of the faucet. Come back down below. I am going to remove the pre-filter first. And that's an interesting and unique sound. Not supposed to happen, but I will continue removing the membrane and post filter. And there's really not much to removing the membrane and post filter, doing the exact same twist off as the pre-filter. I'll reposition the camera and show you what we're going to be removing on the rear portion of that case. On the back side of the case, here is your auto shutoff kit, and it's got five quarter inch bolts or screws. Go ahead and remove all five of those. And these quarter inch screws should come off very easily. And as you do this, do not harm this red line nor the lower flow restrictor kit. You don't want to break that. There are actually six screws in our case, four on top and two down below. The two lower screws do not have washers on them. I'm going to grab the very bottom and shift this auto shutoff valve kit right off. And here is a closer view of the internal diaphragm. Check that out. And here's a closer look of the auto shutoff valve kit. Again, this side right here meets that diaphragm inside. You got two inserts here. One is your check valve and your check valve is on the top in our case. I wanna show you a schematic or diagram. Here's the auto shutoff kit. And number six, as you can see right here, is your check valve kit. And that is that little insert that goes again on top. I'm going to carefully use this little pick tool to remove both of those inserts. We have the GXRQ18 November Bravo November. Again, this little pick tool, I'll carefully remove the lower O-ring. That should just pop right out. I'll set that aside. And as far as the check valve, it also has a little O-ring. Pull that out first. Set that aside. And there is your check valve and it has a spring loaded valve on the very inner center of it. And you have to carefully remove this. And what I'll do is press in on the spring loaded center and shift my pick tool down below behind the outer lip and just carefully pull it out just like that. And just be careful. You can see it's coming ever so slightly. And there it is. I'll grab it by hand now. And that is the check valve again. The inner portion right there is spring loaded. And if this fails, it will cause your entire system to shut down and not produce any water. And this part I believe is only like $7, maybe less. Maybe you can get two for $7, who knows. Before I put it in, I'm just going to inspect it. I might actually dip this in some vinegar. And again, the spring loaded center portion operates as designed. I push it in, let it go, and it spring loads back to the closed position. And that operates under water pressure or internal PSI. You will notice the difference between the lower insert design. It's got those four prongs or teeth sticking out and the check valve goes again on the top. Push it in and I will then insert the O-ring and push it in as well. And I'll grab the lower O-ring and push that down flush with the four inner teeth. Now it's time to install it. And when reinstalling it, just line up the actual portion here with the diaphragm and holes. And you are screwing into plastic thread. Do not cross thread these screws and do not over tighten. Again, you are screwing into plastic thread. In addition, the upper four screws have washers and the lower two screws have no washers. Now it's time to secure with the screws. At this point, all six screws are secured. Coming out front, and at this point, we are going to clean up and dry up all the water, both around the case, in the case, and under the case. After drying everything up, I'm going to insert the filter, starting with the lower post filter, and it clicks in place, followed by the center membrane. And you should hear water flow slightly, and now the light-colored pre-filter. 
And from here, we are going to turn the water back on by turning it counterclockwise. And I can hear water flowing ever so slightly. That's good science. Coming up top, and all we're doing now is patiently waiting for the water to come out of the RO faucet. When it comes out, we are going to turn the faucet off and allow the system to pressurize. Back down below, and on average, it may take between five and eight minutes for water to make it through the filters and up the line through the faucet and into the sink. Just be patient. Coming back up to the faucet on the side is the air gap, and we hear some crackling sounds, and that is good signs. Water is about to make it up and out of the faucet. And I let the system repressurize for about three to four hours. Big difference, what do you think? That is awesome. And we're gonna be able to fill up this entire mason jar and maybe two to three more. So we are happy. I'll turn that off. DIYers, hopefully this helps. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And definitely check out the link scrolling above now. It will take you to our reverse osmosis playlist and a lot of helpful videos. Thanks again for watching.